Hey everyone, uh, awesome riff of the day, number nine, coming at you right now. I uh, haven't done one of these in a few weeks, so it's time to get back at it. Uh, going to do a twofer today to make up for it with a couple by Canadian rock legend Kim Mitchell. Uh, first up, the really fun riff to play from probably his most well-known song, Go For A Soda, and then the absolutely killer riff from the track Drive and Desire from his Max Webster days before Kim Mitchell became a solo artist. And here I go again, uh, bringing love to another Canadian guitarist, and again, I make no excuses for it. As a, as a Canadian boy, a teenager, man, uh, this is the stuff that I grew up on, and I'm making it my mission in life to bring as much love and attention to these great players as I can, albeit in my very small little way. Uh, and today we're going to have a look and a little chat about Kim Mitchell, solo artist, amazing guitar player, and once leader of the very eccentric and odd, but awesome, Canadian band Max Webster, a band that I was a huge fan of as a teenager and still am, as a matter of fact. I was listening to them today and not because of this video either. Uh, based out of Toronto and formed in 1973, Max Webster blended metal, prog, rock, hard rock elements into somewhat of a genre-defying uh, defining blend that won the group a huge cult following in Canada within the mid-70s and late 70s. Max Webster, if you don't know, was not a person in the band. There was no Max Webster. It's just the name that the band chose to go by. They were looking for a, a name similar to Jethro Tull when they formed the band and settled upon Max Webster. With his work as lead vocalist, lead guitarist, bizarro frontman, and chief songwriter within the band Max Webster, spanning over five albums uh, during the 70s, I've always likened Kim Mitchell as being uh, Canada's version of Frank Zappa. Uh, in addition to musical similarities and his odd and eccentric st uh, stage presence and look, Mitchell also had a style of guitar playing and soloing very much akin to Frank Zappa. Sadly, however, uh, Max Webster wouldn't find an audience outside of Canada and never really reached much more than cult status within the country. Uh, writing hit songs wasn't really their thing, and, and their musical output at the time was just too damn weird uh, for finding much of a mass audience inside or outside of Canada, for that matter. Though the fans that they did gather tended to be rather rabid and obsessed with the band, such as myself. They were also good friends with the much more popular Canadian progressive rock band Rush, uh, who often took Max Webster on the road as their supporting act, culminating each year for a number of years with their traditional double bill on New Year's Eve at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens. They also collaborated together on the Max Webster track Battle Scar from the band's final album Universal Juveniles in 1980. I'll put a link down below to Battle Scar if you've never heard it because it is awesome. Uh, with Kim Mitchell's first solo release, Akimbo, a logo, in 1984 after dissolving Max Webster, Mitchell dropped much of the prog rock elements and, and the eccentricities of Max Webster's music and forged ahead on his own with a more radio-friendly and streamlined sound. Though he could still certainly rock out on tracks like Lager and Ale, I Am a Wild Party, Rock and Roll Duty, he was starting to find his songwriting legs for music that was a bit more accessible to radio. Uh, still, for the most part, his success remained limited to a Canadian audience. Uh, but with songs finally hitting the radio airwaves and Canadian video channels in the 80s, he found a much greater success as a solo artist than with his days fronting Max Webster. 
One of these tracks that we'll be looking at today, Go For A Soda, from Akimbo Alogo, uh, was his only hit single south of the border in the United States, and a modest one at that, reaching only as high as number 86 on the Billboard Top 100 in 1984. Uh, though it has shown up in TV shows such as The Trailer Park Boys, filmed right here in my home, hometown, Miami Vice and American Dad, it was also the uh, campaign theme song for MAD, M-A-D-D, in the 80s, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Uh, Kim would have numerous hit singles over the next 10 years or so in Canada, but would never chart again in the United States and remained, like many other Canadian acts, such as The Tragically Hip, April Wine, Blue Rodeo, Sloan, amongst many others, huge in Canada, but practically unknown outside of its borders. Uh, as far as Kim Mitchell's guitar playing goes, like I said earlier, he had this very fast, dissonant, noodly quality to his uh, soloing, very much like Frank Zappa, and has always been one of my favorite guitar players, uh, an incredibly talented soloist that too few outside of Canada have heard. I'm going to drop two links down below in the description for you to check out. Uh, the first is uh, the song Toronto Tontos from Max Webster's debut album, a song which highlights just how bizarre this band's music could be. And the second one is, is a link to one of my favorite Max Webster tracks, The Party, from their 1978 third album, Mutiny Up My Sleeve, which shows off some of Kim's uh, unor un unorthodox soloing prowess, as well as the band's witty lyrics and sense of humor. Uh, just in closing, uh, speaking of lyrics, Max Webster was one of those rare bands that had a lyricist who was not a member of the band, a fellow by the name of Pai Dubois, whose brilliant lyrical prose found a big fan in another well-respected rock lyricist in Russia's Neil Peart. Uh, go read some of Max Webster's lyrics by Pai Dubois. It's just some, some very clever, bizarre, weird, funny, but very well-written stuff. But for now, let's dig into arguably Kim's most famous riff from one of uh, his biggest hits both here in Canada and south of the border. Let's have a look at the very cool riff to go for a soda. And then we'll dig into one of his more rocking riffs from his Max Webster days and one of my favorite tracks of theirs, Drive and Desire. And again, if you're unfamiliar with these tracks but like what you're hearing here today, I'll drop links to both of them uh, down below in the description for you to check out. Uh, you may be familiar with Go For A Soda already, but please check out Drive and Desire. It is a killer song with some great guitar playing in it. So uh, let's have a look at uh, Go For A Soda first. All right, let's have a look at Go For A Soda by Kim Mitchell. We are in standard tuning with this one, though I think he was tuned down a half step on the recording. Uh, we are going to play it in standard tuning. Uh, go get your Strat because uh, Kim Mitchell was a Strat guy. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> uh, it's an inside joke between me and Charles. Uh, all right, so it starts here on the uh, the... B and the E string. Lots of downstrokes here. The whole opening bit is played with downstrokes. So you're going to hit those two strings together at the second fret on the B and the E. Hit it twice. And then you're going to hammer on pull off from four back to two. And then when you hammer back on, you're going to let those two notes ring together. And then you're going to go up there and grab four of the G. And so the, this whole opening bit, it's all two strings together for the most part, except that one. And then back down there to those two strings at the second fret. So then again, two strings each time. You're going to get up here on the fourth fret of the G, still holding on to the second fret of the uh, B. Back that one up to three and leave it there. And then again, two strings, fourth on the D and that third on the G. And then we're gonna skip up here to the sixth fret on the D and the G string and do the same type of thing. These are all downstrokes. 
Like watch my right hand, all downstrokes. And then up here to the sixth fret, D and G, do the same thing, hammer on, and then release from eight back to six, hitting both strings at the same time. And then with your pinky, grab uh, nine of the A. And then again, three, two strings together, six, eight, nine of the D, catching the uh, six of the G along with them. So up to that point, slowly. And then we're going to slide in to uh, 10, no, sorry, 9 of the D and the G with a little. Now we're finally getting into some upstrokes. And then back to 4. And then we're into this. So, and then we're going to do the same thing here that we did up here. Hammer on four to six, catching the four of the G on the D string. Grabbing seven of the A. And then this. So that is four of the G up to six of the A. And then four of the G up to four of the A. So you're going to want to roll that one up from four to four, four on the G up to four on the A. And then you're going to skip it down here. Now you're going to go four on the A or four on the G up to two on the A. And then finally finish up on two of the low E, bouncing off the fourth fret of the G each time. And then it repeats four more times. That is the whole lick. Uh, and then you basically just repeat it four times. I'll play through the whole thing slowly and then I'll play through the whole thing at full speed. And that's the riff. So let's play it one, once through at uh, full speed. And that, my friends, is how you play the opening riff to Go For A Soda by uh, Kim Mitchell. Hope that helped you out. All right, Drive and Desire by Kim Mitchell and Max Webster. This is such a cool riff. I love this riff. And uh, we are in standard tuning with this one. We switched up guitars because there's no bloody ways playing this one on a Strat. Charles, we're good to go, buddy. <laughs> So that is two hits on the uh, second fret. I got a lot of noise going on here. I don't know why. Second fret of the A string for two hits, and then you're going to have your uh, you're going to have these fingers planted down here the almost the entire time. Middle finger on the second fret of the G, pinky on the third fret of the B. It's basically a little D shape. So you're going to go two hits on the uh, second fret of the A, and then you're going to upstroke those two notes on the G and the B. <laughs> And then you're going to keep uh, palm muted, palm muting the A string. And then you're going to go back up to that uh, second fret of the A and then back down for another upstroke of those two frets, at, of those two strings, the G and the D. So down strokes on the uh, the lower notes, up strokes on the two uh, notes down here on the G and the B. And then we're into this lick. 
open E to the second fret, hammer onto the second fret of the uh, E string. Two hits on the open A and then two hits on the second fret of the A. And you're doing all of this with your index finger. So uh, when you're hitting the A string, you're palm muting those two notes. And then you're gonna slide from two to five, back to two. Open A, back to two. So that whole lick. And uh, don't be afraid to give the second, uh, the second time you hit down there on those two strings, give them a little waggle, give them a little vibrato. So you repeat that four times, and then you're gonna bounce off the open A string, palm muted, with those same two notes down here on the G and the B. And now we're going to go up to the G at the third fret of the low E, which means we have to switch fingers. We're going to replace uh, our uh, middle finger with our index finger on the second fret of the G. See what I did there? So four times on the second fret of this B note here at the second fret of the A, one time on the open A, and one time on the third fret of that G note of the low E. So. Now we're into some power chords. G, up to A, back to, back to an E power chord. Two, three, four. And then a G to A to D power chord. And then you repeat that twice. Two, three, four. let that ring <clears throat> and then the chorus starts and uh, so that's it for that lick and uh, that riff and that I love that riff <laughs> Anyway, I hope I introduced you to something new with this one because this one is a bit out of left field. Not too many uh, people know this one and uh, only really uh, fans of Max Webster. And like I said, it's not a whole lot of them, uh, at least these days, but uh, there were a few in Canada back in the late 70s, early 80s, and I was one of them. And this is my favorite Max Webster song. So uh, anyway, I hope that helped you out. I hope you learned this one. It's, it's a great, uh, great fun to play this lick. Uh, this riff. So uh, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Ciao.